Smart telescopes are taking over the market and are making it possible for anyone who wants to, to see and photograph the night sky like never before, overcoming all barriers and without any prior knowledge. And within this whole astrophotography revolution, the brand Baunis has some of the most powerful models already established on the market. And among them, its flagship is possibly the Vespera model, which already has its second generation available for users, the Vespera 2. On September 29th, Baunis not only launched a new design for the Vespera 2, but also made a true statement of intent. The Vespera 2 X Edition, a new design for one of the most cutting-edge smart telescopes on the market, which, as you can see, leaves everything exposed, showing just how proud and confident the people at Baunis are in their product. My name is Luis Miguel Azorin, and in this video we're going to review this new edition of the Baunis Vespera 2. We're going to look at its features and, as always, we're going to put it to the test. Up until now, Baunis telescopes have always been known for their wide design, which, by the way, really reminds me of Eve from the movie WALL-E, one of my favorite movies, by the way. However, this new X Edition design breaks with everything that came before, featuring a completely transparent casing that leaves no room for doubt. Not only can we see all the components inside this telescope, but we can also watch them in action. Astronomy and technology geeks can now spend some time watching how everything moves inside this telescope. And as for the specifications, I'm going to tell you a bit more about them, since this is one of the most powerful smart telescopes in its class on the market. And also the first smart telescope we've tested here at Natural Portraits. Let's start with the optics and the sensor, which are central to this model, a 50 mm aperture, the same aperture we already had in the Vespera one, and a focal length of 250 mm. The Vespera one had only 200 mm. This means it has a greater ability to bring celestial objects closer, although it also requires more precise tracking. This gives us an f5 focal ratio, which is very common in telescopes dedicated to deep sky astrophotography. The sensor is one of the strong points of this telescope, as it features the Sony IMX 585 color sensor, with a native resolution of 8.3 megapixels, 3840 by 2160 pixels, a 1 by 1.2 inch format, and a sensor size of 11.2 by 6.3 millimeters, with a pixel size of 2.9 microns. Basically, this is one of the most impressive sensors on the market, a sensor that is delivering excellent results, both in planetary astrophotography and deep sky astrophotography, which has even led some brands to release cooled versions of this sensor for high resolution deep sky astrophotography. In comparison, the Vespera one used the Sony IMX462 sensor with around 2 megapixels and only 1920 by 1080 pixels of resolution. As you can see, this sensor is much more basic. This combination of the IMX585 sensor and this focal length gives us a native field of view of 2.5 degrees by 1.4 degrees. And with mosaic mode, we can expand up to 4.33 by 2.43 degrees. In this case, thanks to its covalence technology, which allows it to generate images of up to 50 megapixels completely automatically. All right, now let's talk about storage. We have 25 gigabytes of internal storage available. It's worth mentioning that this is sufficient in most cases, although we'll need to make sure to empty it regularly, especially if we're saving individual images in high resolution 16-bit feed. This is highly recommended if you want to achieve the best possible results in your astrophotography. But if you just feel like taking a stroll through the night sky, showing the wonders of the universe to your friends or family, or doing an educational activity, you can also choose other file types, such as 16-bit TIFF or 8-bit JPG files that are stacked and pre-processed, so you don't have to do anything else. Now let's talk about what might be its weakest point, battery life. The Bionis Vespera 2 has a battery life of approximately 4 hours of operation. From my point of view, this battery life is insufficient for a full astrophotography session. And it also contrasts with the battery life of the previous version, the Vespera one, which was 8 hours. On the other hand, it's worth mentioning that the Vespera 2 charges via a USB-C port with any standard charger. And we can also use it while it's charging, so if we anticipate a long astrophotography session, we could connect it to an external battery. But losing 50% of the battery life, I think, is a significant step backward in this regard. 
And finally, let's talk about the interface and usability. The Bionis Vespra 2 is controlled through the Singularity app. I have to admit, I love the name. The app is highly automated, so that everything is plug and play, and literally anyone can use this telescope. With its standard mode, all we have to do is select the object we want to see or photograph and let the telescope do the rest. But if we're more advanced users, we can choose its mosaic mode or expert mode, where we can select exposure time, gain, calibration frames, and so on. Additionally, we have the option to activate multi-night mode to accumulate astrophotography data over several nights, or the possibility to automate the capture of multiple objects in a single night. And with this review of the main features of the Vespera 2 done, let's see how this X-Edition version looks and performs under the night sky. Well, here we are out in the field with the Bionis Vespera 2, ready to start our astrophotography session, to begin this first field test. As I already mentioned in the studio, the Vespera 2's battery life is not its best feature, which is why for this session I've decided to connect it to an external battery that will allow me to extend my session for as long as I want. So with that said, let's go ahead and connect to our Vespera 2. The first thing we're going to do is tell the app where we are located. Here I have some of my observatories, my registered observation sites, but specifically the place where I am today is not registered. So let's tap here on more, add a new observatory and activate the GPS. All right, and these are the coordinates where I am right now. I tap next and the name of this place is Short Red Decathy. We tap validate and now it's registered. As you can see, we also have information about temperature, lunar phase, weather, clear sky time, and other options like wind speed, etc. As you can see, the app has already recognized our Vespera, so all we have to do now is initialize it. And what the Vespera is going to do now is start a routine, in which it will start up, point towards the sky, focus, locate itself, and from there we can begin our astrophotography session. Well, as you can see, the initialization is now complete, the telescope has pointed towards the sky, focused, and now knows exactly where it is. Therefore, we are now ready to start our astrophotography session. And right now, we have the moon in our sights, it's very low in the sky, and I think we're going to take advantage of that to point at it. We can navigate a bit here through the Singularity app. Right now, we're on this first screen where we have everything related to the connection with the telescope and our current location. If we tap here, we move on to the observation selection section, meaning where we can choose the different objects we can point at. Here it gives us a list of recommended objects. Here we have new objects. Here are the recommended ones. We have categories, all objects, nebulae, galaxies, clusters, solar system, Let's go to the solar system and select the moon. It tells us that visibility is low because it's already very low on the horizon, but even so, we're going to observe it. And as you can see, while the telescope points to the selected object, it gives us a series of informative facts and interesting tidbits about the world of astronomy and astrophotography. It's really an app that I like a lot because it's very educational while also being visually very appealing.
Well, it's more or less just pointing at the moon right now, as far as I can tell. Okay, a ring has appeared here and there. We have the moon. Here we have the moon right in the center of the frame. I think the image is too overexposed. In fact, let's try something because we can activate an advanced user option here. Here from the profile, from the three dots. Parameters, and here we have the expert mode. Let's activate it because this allows us to control the camera settings. Well, honestly, I'm not really sure how to adjust the settings for solar system objects. In this case, the moon. Right now, it's giving me a real-time image, but I can't seem to adjust any settings here, even though expert mode is enabled. I'll have to keep investigating a bit more to figure out how this app works, especially when it comes to solar system objects. As you can see, the focal length that this telescope gives us, together with its aperture, results in a frame with very little magnification, which means it's not an ideal telescope for planetary astrophotography. In fact, let's go to another object in the solar system. Let's stop this observation, and now we're going to go from here, from the solar system, to Saturn which is much better positioned for us. So let's head over there. I really have to say that it's super fun to go from one object to another. It's very, very intuitive and super easy for any type of user. There we have that Baunis ring again, and here we have Saturn. Well, notice that you can actually just barely make out Saturn's ring, but it's tiny. In fact, if we go back to the original magnification that this sensor gives us with this focal length and aperture, this is what we get. Barely a little dot. If we zoom in a lot, then we can start to make out Saturn's ring a bit, which means this isn't the ideal telescope for astrophotography or planetary observation. What is this telescope really powerful for? Well, for observing deep sky objects. So what are we going to do next? we're going to check out one of the highlights of this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. It's autumn, so we're going to look at one of the most impressive objects of the season. It's a galaxy, and here it is, M31, the Great Andromeda Galaxy. Let's set it to advanced mode. Here we have the option to activate the multi-night mode, which would let us reframe on different nights to keep accumulating exposure time. I'm going to turn it off and we'll go with the standard mode because the mosaic mode, as you can see, would allow us to capture a much wider frame of the object we want to photograph, although obviously it will take much longer to complete our photo. So let's switch to standard mode. Let's stop the observation we're doing right now. We stopped the observation with Saturn and now we're heading to M31. Advanced mode. And as you can see in advanced mode, with this telescope's focal length, we're really only going to capture the core of the galaxy. This galaxy is actually very, very large, but even so, we're going to tell it to observe it for us. And here we have the image. As you can see, what the telescope is doing right now is stacking an image for us. In fact, it's capturing 10 second exposures. Yes, 10 seconds. At the top, it shows us the total accumulated time, 30 seconds. And on the right side, the number of images that have already been stacked. In this case, it already has three images, four images stacked at this moment. And what it's going to keep doing is saving for us. Each of these images individually within the telescope's memory. The Vespera 2 itself will perform live stacking for us, but later we can download all these individual images to the computer and stack them ourselves using our usual stacking software if we want to. And well, here we can see what this telescope is capable of in such a simple and fast way. A really interesting feature it has is that if we click here at the beginning, it shows us the difference, how the image changes as it progresses and stacks more and more photos. But this isn't the object I wanted to photograph in this astrophotography session. I wanted to shoot an object I've been wanting to photograph for a long time. It's a planetary nebula, 
one of the largest we can photograph in the night sky, and it's the Helix Nebula. We're going to come back over here again. We're going to stop this observation, and here we have the Helix Nebula. As you can see above, we have favorites, manual. We can manually enter the coordinates of any objects we want to observe ourselves. But the exploration features of the Vaunis Vespera 2 are actually really good and will let us photograph many objects that are within our reach. In this case, we're going with the Helix Nebula. We're in standard mode. And as you can see, this time it's a much smaller object that fits perfectly in the Vespera 2's frame. Let's go for it. Well, there we have the Helix Nebula, which can be seen perfectly in the center of the frame. We already have two 10 second images stacked and look at how much signal and detail we're gaining with just the three photos we've taken so far. The world of smart telescopes is truly spectacular. And as you can see, this Vionis Vespera 2 in this X edition is an absolute marvel. At the same time, it's a super easy telescope to use. With no learning curve, it allows literally anyone to get started in the world of astrophotography. Well, I'm going to leave the equipment working and photographing the Helix Nebula for at least two hours, and let's see what kind of photo we can get with this telescope. Well, in the end, we didn't quite reach two hours of integration. Specifically, I ended up with one hour and 17 minutes, but the object is already very, very low on the horizon, it's inside the dome of light pollution, and it doesn't make much sense to keep capturing images. Still, just look at what a cool photo this is. And this is just the stacked image that the Baonis Vespera 2 gives us directly. Notice that if I zoom in on the image, you can see the details of the Helix Nebula and even the entire halo of nebulosity surrounding it. And look how interesting it is to see how this photo has improved with the integration of all the images taken. If we go to the very first one in the sequence, we can move forward step by step and see in detail how it progresses over time. As we continue, we can observe the process of improving the photograph, noticing how all the intricate details gradually start to appear more clearly. By the way, there is a small but important detail I wanted to mention. I recently found out how to use the manual parameters with the camera's expert mode, which is quite useful. What we actually have to do is come over here to the settings and activate the manual tab, and from this point we can manually select the specific object we want to point at or focus on. In addition to that, we can even enter the exact coordinates of the location where we want to aim, and from here, we could set the precise exposure time we want to apply, as well as the gain we want to use on the camera, and so on. All of these advanced features and settings will be left for a future video, where we will explore the Vespera 2 in Pro Mode in much greater detail, but for now, this is what we have to work with tonight. We're wrapping up the session for this evening and we're going to tell the Vespera to close the arm because with that action we officially finish and conclude our astrophotography session for tonight. I'll stay here packing up the equipment, which in this case is very small. It's one of the things I like most about this type of smart telescope, but I'll leave you with the final result. 